Hey guys, it's Rob here, and welcome back to our Madden 24 Jets franchise. I know it's been a hot minute since we got anything recorded, but that's because I went on holiday and then um, came back from holiday with a cold and couldn't talk and had the cough and everything else that you got going on. With that, and my throat's still kind of wrecked, but I'm gonna power through. Hopefully, I sound too not too snotty, and we will power through this and get this off season out of the way because I'm very excited to. Uh, Hop back into Jets franchise and get this going on into the actual, like, us making a difference, if you will, of our bread and butter. I have already done the weekly training for this week, and as I talked about in the last episode of Jets franchise, we're going to be simulating these last two weeks and just getting right into the off season. Today's episode is going to be just talking about contracts and some of the rookies, as well as stat recaps. So, don't have to stre uh, strap in too tight for this one, as this one's only going to probably be about 30 minutes long, if not a little bit longer. But the one coming after that will be the full off season as well as um, as well as the preseason, not the preseason, the training camp games. So strap in for that, and then the next episode after that will be all of preseason. So probably about hour long episodes each on their own, and then at least I'll just play the moments in that. And then after that we'll be back onto our regular schedule. Let me know if that's how you like this uh, preseason's kind of going. But if not, I'd be look I'd look into doing it different next season. Obviously, we were just growing and learning with this game and powering on through. With that said, we're going to go ahead and I'll show you all the contracts that I went ahead and did. First up, and probably our biggest signing, is Mr. Bryce Huff. He um, has not had a stellar season with us, if we do look at our career stats right here. He's not had a stellar this season this season only coming in with you know two to three sacks every year but i do think he is definitely somebody that um, we can build build with in this franchise build on and uh eventually turn into a stud hopefully going into his fifth season with us but with that said he's definitely not there now and looking at he went undrafted i did not know that that's actually wild but looking at our contract we did give him a three-year deal obviously he's making 4.3 mil this year Raking about 8 mil until it goes up to about 10 in that last year. And I don't think that's a bad, bad thing for somebody that we have a lot of confidence in and who will be our starting left end next season. And that, that was the one thing that got him to sign for that is because um, he'll be the starting on the depth chart next year. Next up, we have Mr. Chuck Clark, and that is because uh, Mr. Ashton Davis spit in my face, told me to go away and go screw myself. So we will not be bringing him back. But as you know, Chuck Clark did have his season ended prematurely for us. And thus his contract reflects that, making an average of 5 mil over the next three seasons. Not a bad contract at all for our starting strong safety. And that means with us losing Adrian Amos and Ashton Davis, he will be our starting strong across from Mr. Jordan Whitehead, who will be keeping his starting position at the free safety position. And our final big signee back here is Mr. Carl Lawson. Again, not somebody that has produced a lot, and you know, that's just because of the nature of our defense and being really bad this season. But he has definitely been one of the bright sides, and we can't let everybody go, because we do need to still have players on the team. And he is the number 17th ranked uh, right end in the league right now. So looking at that, we'll take a look at, as you can see, 4.5 sacks, which is, he'll probably end up with more than his average as he's usually getting like five sacks a season. Had seven last year, being an up year from him from the, not anywhere near the eight that he had his um, rookie season. But seven was a good year last year, and he'll have four point, probably get, he might get another sack, so he should maybe get over his average five sacks a season this year. And just somebody that I can count on to be like a sure stopper in the defense, just your average guy, and football teams need average guys. Unfortunately for us, to keep him here, we had to pay him a little bit more than an average guy that I would like to pay. But only making nine, uh, 9 mil to 10 mil the next year, um, not too bad. And somebody that we can definitely move on from and trade to a contender if we don't end up being that next season. That does cover all of our all of our main um, re-signings that I did because that's all the people that we have left some notable people that we are losing is Mackay Becton I'm just gonna let him walk he's been really bad we don't have the money and he's given up a lot of sacks from like just for me playing the games yeah he's given up six sacks this year which I mean I actually don't know what the average is we'll take a look at that average in the NFL 
So as you can see here, Makai Becton does lead our team in uh, sacks, giving up, being double the next closest at Lake and Tomlinson. Obviously, he gets matched up against harder guys. I recognize that. But with so many less downs played than the rest of the line, as the rest of them have played most of the season together, that also that shows how many injuries we've had. That there's that much of a down discrepancy. Discrepancy, sorry. But uh, yeah, looking at that, you can just tell. First off, he's not available, which is a big issue for your starting O lineman. Which is kind of insane to Wayne Brown's been out that much too. But uh pretty bad like thing for your lineman to have. But also six sacks, we're gonna compare that to the league average. I'm sure that like that can't be good, surely. Because it I I feel the other thing is that you feel the pressures that he gives up as well. So like he's obviously he's not like a leader in sacks given up by any means. By by a lot of means, actually. But like he is definitely um, below average because there's plenty of guys like with let's just take 900 plus snaps 900 plus snaps there's a few guys there well, granted they're guards let's look at the first tackle with 900 plus snaps no he has 97 he has one sack allowed oh uh, wait no still still going uh so like 898 he's played 14 games and he only has one sack allowed uh thousand that's for right guard left tackle that's Dwayne Brown Giving up one. Uh, let's take a look. He might actually not be as bad. I might try to tag him, honestly. I don't. I, was, I thought that was worse than it was. Right tackle. Mm. Look a little. Left tackle. See, left tackle, 1,000 downs played. He's only given up three. Which that could also be something that we're uh, just rolling to the right more. It could also be the issue. So, I don't know. Maybe we will franchise tag him. But. We do not have um, a lot in the money category, so it could be bad. Let's take a look at his actual stats, like, or not his stats, but his. see, it's that pass block, that 67 pass block. He is, like, atrocious in pass block. I don't think we have the money to pay him. We might try, but <clears throat> I doubt that. I doubt it, really. Doubt that being a possibility, also. Sorry for the cough. But anyways, with that said, let's move on to, actually, no, one more thing before we move on college players yes 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 um going into the prospects first off my favorite person by far is actually not this right tackle though this right tackle does look very good my favorite prospect who we will probably be drafting because we need that position is mr mark huden looks great to me has everything i think i could want in a left tackle and probably will be our pick at the number four spot but i may also try to move down and still try to grab him but as far as quarterback goes, you might be thinking we're looking quarterback. I'm not looking quarterback anywhere near the first round. We're having Aaron Rodgers back, hopefully next season. If not, there's some young undrafted guys that I want to showcase that we can look into. The highest I would take a quarterback is this day three, Chad Bolton. He looks like he could be something with that elite throw power, elite strength. But not really what I'm looking at quarterback. He's just 6'6", which makes him cool. That's... All that comes down to, and there was one more, yes, uh, Charlie Dinopol Dinopoli is the only other quarterback I have on my radar at all. Moving on, Daniel Hyde. I was kind of excited when I saw he has a draft story, but unfortunately, I'll pop the draft story up on the screen, and none of what it talks about, I feel like, is even applicable to him. And he's not good. Yeah, that easy, easy says. He's somebody we will keep an eye on as the series continues, just to see how his career progresses. Can't talk, sorry. But as his career progresses, we'll kind of keep an eye on him, but... He will not be in a Jets uniform as he does that. Next up is somebody I was really excited for when I saw his draft story, which I'll have on the screen again. But, um, yeah, he's just uh, looks kind of booty buns with that F, pass block finesse. It's eh. Which, granted, I mean, your pass block power is more important at the center position, whatever. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, if he's there in the third round, I might take him for the chance of dev. But I think that guy has bust ridden all over him. And the final person is Mr. Larry Green with another draft story, and he's the only one that I think looks even semi-decent. But safety is not a massive position for us, so I doubt we'll draft him. But we will keep an eye on Mr. Larry Green moving forward. Otherwise, looking DT in the draft, looking like a trenches draft, honestly, and maybe there was one wide receiver worth yet. Uh, Mr. Gordon Hoover, possibly if he falls some, only because he has an actual face, and I think that means the potential for a good dev. But outside of that, 
no offensive sealed positions I'm really interested in in the early rounds. And maybe we go like corner in the later rounds as far as skill positions go. And we could also use some coverage linebackers, but unfortunately I just don't think we have enough draft capital to get it unless we can trade Mekhi Becton away in the offseason and let a different team resign him. That said, let's go ahead and move on to the next week against the Patriots. So, as expected, we obviously lost to the Browns 24-21. We lose to the Browns, and we have this week against the 8-8 eight eight Patriots. I went ahead and did training. We'll see who we got to upgrade off of that. Just the one and only Sauce Gardner, who obviously is a big cornerstone for us going into the future. And one of the few positions that I'm actually happy with, and a plus one speed rating makes me even happier, bringing him to a 94 speed rating and being the second ranked quarterback in the league. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to cover though. We're about to just go straight into playoffs and after the sim, we'll take a look and see where our draft pick falls out. But yeah, well, let's take a look at the playoff bracket, see who made it, see who's in. And interesting all around for the most part number one seed bills going and number one seed dallas cowboys kansas city taking up the seventh seed interesting 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 gonna have to take a look at that uh division and see how that shaped out this year for sure anyways let's go back and see where our draft position fell out before we will sim we'll sim up until the yearly awards and stuff and then we'll take a look at season stats and all of that good stuff and how do I take a look at draft picks? Yeah, there we go. Uh, no, no, practice for all our draft picks. Ooh, we dropped to the eighth overall pick. Mm. Almost falling out of the top ten by the end of the season. Definitely not what we what we wanted, if we're gonna be honest. Like it's not that's not good. As we will continue just simming on to the conference championship game and again into the Pro Bowl. First thing that I'm excited to take a look at, I'm sure we had nobody make the Pro Bowl roster, but that's okay. And we don't even get a coach Pro Bowl because Pro Bowl, we're trash. So taking a look down at the AFC, dang, Derek White is still in the league and making Pro Bowl crazy. Uh, mm, who would have guessed? Not any of our players. Audrey, no, no, no. Quinn Williams, Quinn Williams makes it. There we go, there's somebody. Somebody to be excited for as that is it crazy okay well at least we got somebody in there you know but there is all your pro bowls if you're interested obviously lots of 99s all around interest let's see is tj what here tj what does not make an appearance did bro have it down here that'll be something to be interested in for sure but yeah derek what making this thing is fullback crazy though Brock Purdy is your QB3. That's an interesting one. Dak Prescott, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, and Joe Burrow. All right. Well, that is the... Oh, hey, look. Froner's updated. Crazy. That's the Pro Bowl roster. Let's go ahead and advance to Super Bowl week. The Falcons and the Bills. That is not a Super Bowl. I think anybody saw it coming. Let's take a look at this playoff bracket and see how the playoffs really shook out. We had a upset over the Raiders for the seventh seed Chiefs beating out the twenty or the second seed Raiders. We had an another upset of Chargers over the Browns, and the game finally went as planned with the Jaguars over the Ravens at a score of 29-25. Can I click into this and see how many what the no overtime there? One no oh, one two games. Is this an overtime game? No. Uh, nothing really too special there. The uh, one seed proceeds to beat the seventh seed as you would expect and the one seed proceeds to beat the fourth seed going in and over here upset bill the atlanta falcons beat the dallas cowboys 35 28 in a, that's a pretty exciting game honestly three tds no interceptions says miranda only throwing one td b john robinson putting the team on his back not a lot of yards but those two tds definitely helping the longest run being nine yards is kind of crazy CD Lamb showed out, but so did Kyle Pitts. And any notable, no interceptions or anything. Obviously, no turnovers. Two great quarterbacks going at it right then. Desmond Ritter being a lot better than you would think. Playing really well in that game. Beating out the number one seed Dallas Cowboys. Would be very interested. To, they were the number two seed team, obviously. Though. So that's it is interesting. Interested to see how that um, how that Super Bowl is going to shake out. That said, let's go ahead and take a look at yearly awards. 
Your NFL MVP for the 2023 season is Josh Allen. We'll go take a look at his stats in a moment. Here's all the contenders that fell behind him. No positions besides quarterback, as you do. Arthur Smith making a comeback this season after a rocky start and winning coach of the year with the Atlanta Falcons. Interesting, dude. Are we anywhere close to coach of the year? No, didn't think so. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Josh Jacobs with, we will go take a look at how many yards he put up. Defensive Player of the Year, Max Crosby. Dang, Offensive Player and Defensive Player of the Year and you still can't produce a Super Bowl. That's pretty tragic. Offensive Rookie of the Year, obviously nobody close as A-Chain does take that crown. Defensive Rookie of the Year for the AFC, Will Anderson Jr. Interesting looks there. Two Jets players, Will McDonald and Zaire Barnes. That's interesting with how bad our defense was in the running. Best QB is actually Lamar Jackson with Josh Allen's obviously getting the MVP vote. Best running back, and I'm just going to flick through these because we don't have any. If you are interested, though, they are there. So, best O-line. Bills player gets best D-line. Linebacker, Max Crosby, obviously. Is a... Uh, TJ Watt's not even here. Dang, TJ Watt must have had a down year. Possibly a possible trade target for my Steelers fan heart. Greg Zerland, though, does come close to winning best kicker of the year, so that's interesting. And just to give you a flick, click run through of the NFC, there you go. Falcons have defensive player and offensive rookie of the year in Bijan Robinson and Lorenzo Carter. Defensive rookie of the year goes to Brian Branch for the Detroit Lions. Dak Prescott, best quarterback. Best running back, obviously, going to Bijan. Lots of Cowboys players. Lots of Cowboys players. That's insane that the Falcons were able to beat them out. Terrell Edmonds winning best DB is definitely an interesting look there. And best kicker goes to Zane Gonzalez. All right. With all of the awards out of the way, we are going to move into the stat portion of the video. All right. First off, we're going to start with the Jets roster, obviously. And Malik Willis being our starting quarterback for... Probably, does it, does it say games played? It does. For not the majority of the year, but with Zach Wilson actually getting a chance in every game. That's kind of insane. Whether Malik getting benched or hurt or whatever happened. Or Zach getting benched and then Malik coming in. But uh, threw a lot more TDs than Zach, obviously. Has a lot higher upside than Zach Wilson. That's why Zach Wilson will be gone. But also managed to throw way more interceptions. So very much a Jameis Winston clone without any of the upside of Jameis Winston. So hopefully none of them are quarterback next season. And Aaron Rodgers is instead. Also, apparently Aaron Rodgers, oh, I don't think I benched him properly. He played the last two games and went 4-for-1. Tough. How did Zach Wilson get in all 17 games then? Did he get hurt in these games? Anyways, whatever. My bad on the sim. Reese Hall coming in slightly below 1,000 yards. Unfortunately, not able to hit that. But 8 TDs this year does look pretty good for the young running back. And hopefully he can produce better in upcoming seasons. Michael Hardman, our leading wide receiver, almost breaks 1,000 yards, but did have 11 more receptions than Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson leading the team, though, with his 7 TD grabs. And not a whole lot of production from anybody else. Didn't really spread the ball around as much as we would like. Tyler Conklin did have a great season for a tight end, though. Blocking, by far, our worst lineman was Makai Becton with eight, two more sacks allowed in the next game. Dear Lord. And yeah, that's that's that. Uh, defense, who was our sack leader? Sack leader, Quinn Williams, obviously. Then John Franklin Myers. Ashton Davis, actually, coming off those safety blitzes. Carl Lawson. Uh, Quincy Williams. And where? Where is Bryce Huff? Bryce Huff? He definitely had five sacks, or four, like four and something earlier. Right? Am I tweaking? I could have. Am I done? No, that's Carl Lawson. Carl Lawson had five sacks. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yes, I am done. Maybe. One second. If Carl Lawson has... Yeah, Carl Lawson had 4.5. Okay. Whew. Guys, I thought I was losing it. But Sauce Gardner, there's our interception leaders. And 94% on the year, only one miss by Greg Zerline. So that's pretty good look. Pretty good looks. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, league stats just to see how everybody was... Okay, maybe. Leading the league this year in pass, uh, passing yards was Patrick Mahomes with a 30. That was, wait, hold up. Go, go back to yards. No, go, go, go back to yards. 
a 30 to 1 interception ratio with a 71% completion. How did he not win MVP? You're telling me less yards, a lot less yards, and 37 TDs and 7 interceptions beats out a lot more yards, 30 TDs, and 1 interception and better completions percentage? That's pretty insane. As far as TDs go, uh, there's all your leaders. Patrick Mahomes standing out ahead of the pack 100%. 29 to 4 is season by Joe Burrow, though. Not bad. Honestly, not a bad season by a lot of these quarterbacks. Interceptions, though. Malik Willis tops out at 24, leading the league in only 10 games played. That is tragic. And Zach Wilson's pretty high up there with 18 as well. Uh, not a whole lot of quarterbacks. Like no, no big quarterback with zero picks. Patrick Mahomes being the lowest with one. Rushing, uh, Josh Jacobs, no wonder he won Offensive Player of the Year, uh, 19 and 12, or best running back, whatever he won. Let's see what he won. I can't actually remember. I already forgot. Uh, progression history. NFL rushing yards leader, running back of the year, and Offensive Player of the Year. Yeah, insane. 1,900 yards with 20 TDs. He leads the league in TDs and yards. With Bijan being behind him, and here's all your rushing leaders that way. That's pretty insane. Receiving year leaders only having only coming in at 1,600 yards. CD Lamb is our reception leader for the year. Lots of good, uh, honestly, not a lot of receivers over. Okay. Oh, there's like, what, 25? Over 1,000? That's not bad. And receiving TDs, Michael Gallup, another Cowboy, leading with 14. That's insane. He had 14. How much did CD Lamb? Nine. That's pretty wild. Pretty wild indeed. Blocking most sacks even up was by the both of the Titans tackles. No wonder they didn't do good. And most sacks this season, 16 by Max Crosby. Dude, TJ Watt is just not. He must have he must have had a season ending injury. That's kind of wild. Leading with solo tackles is Logan Wilson, and leading with interceptions is Terrell Edmonds. That's why he got a uh, defense player of the year or best DB non defense player of the year. And there we go. That is all of the stats for the season. I'm going to go take a look at some players we might be interested and showcase some of those off to you, see what happened around the league, and uh, then I will show the records, and then we will be done for today's episode. So here we are with TJ Watt. This is what happened to him. He had some kind of injury early on in the season and did not play until week 14. He did play those last few games and had five sacks in that thing. And because of that, I go around now, look at all the depth trait regression off camera, and he went down to superstar dev. I don't feel like that's fair because he was injured. I don't feel like you would take that away from him just because of that. So I am going to go ahead and give him his X Factor back. And I might, I don't know, I'll keep depth trait regression on, but that is what that's going to be on. And I go around now, take a look at all of the players that regressed, and I debate on if it was good enough or not, except for our players. I just take that. For how it is for our players for the most part but that is what happened to him he got injured and did not play until week 14 which is kind of crazy alex highsmith is also injured no wonder the steelers didn't get anywhere but that is them and let's go take a look at the records for the rest of the for the rest of the teams and here is the um the win loss ratio of all the teams in the league i just want to have this on file so we can kind of when we play teams next season we can have a what should we call it, a record of like how good they did the did last season or this season Steelers came in last at four and 13 that's insane also hopefully we don't get fired because I do have coach firing on so that could also be a big big bad just to just uh, actually I'll probably turn it off I think it could be cool but I think it's kind of broken but anyways here is all of them and we will definitely be taking a look at this or I'll be taking a look at this um throughout next season as we come in and play people just to kind of see how the league is progressing I think it's nice to have that have that in there and easily available since Madden doesn't do it itself with that said, we're going to advance to the offseason and then leave this episode off here. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this and seeing where our teams are and stuff. But with that said, this is... Oh, season recap. Let's take a look at this. My bad. Not ending yet. Uh, yeah, so there's all that. I forgot this. I forgot that was a thing. That's actually pretty cool. So we can still see the Super, Stol Super Bowls and stuff at ease without me having to look back at this video. But there is your Super Bowl winner and such. And if you are enjoying this Jets franchise, please do feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And I will see all of you in the offseason.